Okay, so this this is a bittersweet um, video for me to do. Um, after six plus years in the red ecosystem, uh, owning red cameras, still loving them, um, we've decided to jump ship to another system at least that we mainly have uh, internally. Um, buckle in, this is why we left red. You can probably see right next to me, I've got the, this is the Ursa Mini G2, Blackmagic's, I guess, flagship camera at the moment, and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Now, we previously, and by previously, I mean up till a couple of days ago, um, our main two cameras were the, uh, the Red Scarlet W and the Red Scarlet MX, which had basically become our interview B cam. Um, didn't, doesn't have a lot of great slow motion options outside of 3K 48 FPS. Um, and we've also got a Fuji X-T3 and a couple of other cameras. Um, Fuji X-T3 is a great hybrid camera for when we need um, you know, a bit of stills or we just want that. Um, and it's got great autofocus and 10 bit out to an Atomos recorder, um, which is recording this right now from a, the original Sony a7S. Um, so I, I actually love red cameras. It's, it's, I think it is my favorite image as beautiful as the Ari image is, and, and the highlight roll off on it, I think is second to none. But there's just something about the, the, the color science, especially once Red introduced um, the IPP2 color workflow, which just made skin tones that much more vibrant and, and just made everything, gave, gave you so much more control, uh, just made everything that much better. I felt like they absolutely nailed it. Um, but over the years, we've just seen that our, our needs have changed or because of the outstanding image quality from the red cameras, we've, we've kind of made them work, um, in situations where they're not the most, um, convenient tool for the job. Um, so I thought for this video, I'm just going to outline some of the reasons why, um, some, some of the reasons why we got to a point with the work that we do, that we got to the point of deciding that, um, it was time for us to maybe move away from red, at least for the time being, I'd certainly still, still hire them for certain jobs uh, and that'll feel weird hiring one now, but, um, but for the time being, um, why it was time to, to move away. Um, so firstly, the, the overriding thing is, um, although we do music videos and although we do particularly, um, narrative passion projects and the occasional narrative, like, like short film for, um, for a commercial entity, and that might be used in, in, in training or whatever. Um, a lot of our work um, is predominantly a sort of more documentary style corporate work. So big companies, lots of interviews, um, lots of B-roll, lots of slow motion, lots of normal motion, a little bit of events, which previously we didn't do a lot of, but has been starting to, to creep in for us. And that's throughout Australia and also in Asia. Um, so a bit of that as well, and we've somehow <laughs> used reds in those situations even along with other camera systems, but they're not ideal. Because we're doing this more, this more, I guess, yeah, documentary, not always run and gun, sometimes it's planned, but we just found, you know, we're, we're on a shoot and, you know, we need to change an ND filter and there's only a two person crew. It's very different when you're on a short film with a, with a bigger camera team you've got someone there to quickly change NDs. If you're, if you're just shooting, if I was just shooting narrative projects, commercials and short films or features, and um, like music videos, I don't think I'd see the need to change. Um, 
but because we're very much in that, um, we want something that's going to be better suited to that documentary and corporate documentary space, but also have outstanding image quality. Um, you know, when the C200 came out, we, we looked at that really closely. It's a wonderful camera. I've hired it a few times. Um, but we're just like, oh, there's no, you know, there's no in-between codec. We didn't want the C300 Mark II because there was no kind of compressed RAW or anything. Then the C200 has RAW light, but they're, they're, it's not that light. They're huge files. Um, uh, and then an, an 8-bit MP4 codec, which we kind of, I played with and I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's not going to do the job. When Blackmagic brought out um, their compressed RAW, Blackmagic RAW solution, that's the first time I really sat up and took notice. Um, maybe I should have much earlier, but really took notice of what they were doing. I'd fallen completely in love with Red Code. I think that's an amazing codec. It's only going to get better once the, the new SDK is in Premiere and other um, Premiere and Resolve, because it, it is flying in Red City X, but it's, when I compare Red Code to um, Blackmagic RAW at equivalent, or even Blackmagic RAW at higher resolutions, it is so much smoother uh, on my system than, than Red Code is um, in both Premiere and, and Resolve. So look, I'll just talk through some of the reasons why, um, for, the, for that kind of work that we're doing, why we, we, we we saw the red cameras as, as incredible as the images, as a bit of a, in my opinion, um, as a bit of a hindrance um, for us. And that is um, long boot times, particularly on the Scarlet W. I think it's somewhere around 30 seconds. I'm not sure exactly. But if you're out, camera's off, um, you're out in the field, you're in nature, um, you see a shot you want to get. I mean, I got in the habit generally just leaving the batteries on, but you see a shot you want to get it. If you've got to boot it up, um, it takes too long. Um, these cameras, I think, are maybe five to seven seconds. I've literally had them a couple of days, so I've, I've just played around with them. Um, but five to second, seven seconds boot up time. The other thing, because of that such a long boot up time on the reds, ended up leaving just them on all the time, which other than the fact that they already draw more power, just led to going through even more batteries to do that kind of work. So um, I've got a V-Lock battery solution coming in for the 6K. Um, the Ursa, yeah, takes all the V-Locks. We've got about 10 of them. Um, uh, takes all the V-Locks, no problem, and uses a lot less, um, uses a lot less power. So they'll, they'll, they'll run for a lot longer. Um, NDs, yes, the 6K, there's not going to be no difference there. And we're really seeing that as a, as a B cam, um, both for interviews or for gimbal work. Um, but our, our new A cam, the Osa Mini Pro has up to six stops internal NDs. And you know, when I got the camera, I just quickly put a battery on, put a lens on and stuck it out the door. It was raining outside. And um, just the, the, the novelty, it felt like a novelty to me as a, um, as previously as a red shooter, to be able to um, just turn this little wheel here and, <laughs> and see that ND come on. It was like, oh my gosh, just immediately went to six stops and the exposure was perfect with the, with the lens wide open. Um, so you've got clear, you've got, um, I think it's clear, two, four, and six stops. And yet, some of the Canon cameras, I think, are going up to 10. Sony's got its incredible Vary ND on some of their cameras, including the new FX9. I, knew Can I know Canon's new C500 Mark II, I think, is going to go up to 10 stops. So yes, they're absolutely better. They're also, in, in terms of their NDs, they're also considerably more expensive. And as I found myself looking at the G2, uh, this, so this is the generation two of the Ursa Mini Pro. The other thing that, that, that really hit me about this camera, and I know I'm talking a bit out of order, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll rejig it, but is that one of the things that um, some of my clients uh, are in love with is that 100, 120 frames per second 
um, slow motion footage. It absolutely can get overdone, I overdo it, but, but they love it. And the other thing that, that happens um, a lot is I have clients wanting to pull images, uh, still images, I had still images pulled out of 4K slow motion on the Red Scarlet W that's been used in print advertising, used in online and used on billboards. And um, so one of the issues with the Scarlet W, when I first got it, because I'd only ever really shot slow motion 50 frames per second, I actually didn't think I'd have a need for cropping to 4K and, um, and, and to do 100 frames per second. So I'd never really experienced it before, but there's, I'm, I'm a big um, handheld shooter and I, I hadn't really experienced the the way, the floatiness, the movement that handheld gets when you get into that 100 to 120 frames per second range, how much, how it kind of smooths the handheld movement out in a way that can be like really quite beautiful in a way that, you know, um, the gimbal stuff is very smooth and everything's different. So you can still accentuate it, give it that human movement but that slower, uh, that faster frame rate really smooths that out. Now, al although the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro is a 4.6K camera, not, um, not 5K, it shoots full 120 frames per second at its full 4.6K RAW at 8 to 1 compression. So I'm actually getting higher resolution for those slow motion um, shots with zero crop on the sensor. The other beautiful thing about it is that all I need to do is press a button, um, the high frame rate button, and it instantly switches. So I don't have to go dallying into menus. I just press it, record, press it again. Yeah, one of the one of the big issues to me with 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 the Reds was the lack of. Um, the lack of internal NDs, which pretty much everyone else, including Ari with the, um, the Amira and the, the Mini, has. Um, and, you know, for us, it's just, you know, if you, again, if you're shooting narrative work um, with a crew, you're shooting music videos, it's not as big, like it really is not as big of an issue. But if you're moving fast, you're, you're changing situations. It's just such a con convenience. But and then on other shoots, it's just it's really a necessity just being able to do that. And I know there are some wonderful third party solutions. There's the, the Kipper Tie. Um, I can't even remember what the system's called that they've got. They've got a wonderful um, kind of uh, internal ND built into a mount that they've done for the red cameras. Um, but being a Scarlet owner, not like I don't have a $40,000, $50,000 Monstro or whatever it costs, could not justify the expense of that for an ND filter, which worked out to around $4,000 Australian. Considering what I can get for that money um, from Blackmagic, or what else I could buy that's useful to me, whether it's you know a new tripod or a new lens or whatever, I, I couldn't justify that expense. Having NT filters built in is amazing. Maybe the other main um, issue with RED, and again, it's available if you wanna spend the money, is just poor onboard audio. Again, if you're shooting music videos, not an issue. Um, the Scarlet W at least has, and the DSMC2 bodies all at least have an internal scratch mic. Um, shooting narrative, generally, and certainly for us, that's going to be getting recorded separately, and that's not a problem. Now, for us, even with documentary stuff, we, for the last few years, recorded everything separately because that's just what we've done. And we just never saw the value for the money in investing in a, um, you know, the onboard sort of audio everything um, module on the red cameras. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, I can't remember off my head exactly what the price is, but we just did not see the value for money in that purchase decision, especially when you can get something like the Ursa Mini G2 with professional onboard audio, including two XLR inputs. I'm gonna have to do extensive testing on this to test the, the preamps, 
uh, and everything. Um, I'm sure there's going to be heaps of situations where we're still recording, especially where we're often hiring in professional soundos. So um, there's going to be plenty of times where we're not recording audio to it at all. But if we're just doing a quick sort of interview or something um, and we're in a controlled environment, um, I think we'll definitely just be recording directly to this and saving us that step in post. Now, I want to make this point overwhelmingly clear. Um, I'm not jumping ship because I'm dissatisfied with red, um, because I found something better. Um, I'm leaving because this is a solution that better suits our needs at this point in time. If I was solely shooting narrative and music video work, I think I would almost definitely stick with red. I love the image. I love the compressed raw solution. It is a pure cinema machine um, in terms of its beautiful colors, its beautiful image quality and the flexibility of its codec in post and the flexibility to vary the compression based on the project that you're working on and the ultimate, ultimately where that is gonna end up being seen, whether it's online or on TV uh, or on a cinema screen. If I was only doing that kind of work, I think rather than moving systems, we'd be looking at um, probably upgrading to something like the Red Gemini for its improved uh, low light capability and then um, 5K at a slightly wider field of view uh, and getting, I think it's 96 frames per second at 5K. I think we'd value, although the 8K would be very valuable for sort of the, the pulling stills work that we do, um, but I just, I don't think I'd see enough value in that and the Gemini would be the camera that I'm looking at. I also wanna to, want to say that we, so we had the Red Scarlet X, we've had that since the very, either the end of 2012 or the very start of 2013, it was on that, on that cusp. So six years with that camera, six, six, six and a half years with that camera. That camera never failed us. It never let us down. You know, I've heard stories of reliability issues with red cameras, but quite frankly, I've never experienced them. Um, that camera is an absolute workhorse and it's still, it's, it was ahead of its time, I think, for when it, when it came out and the price point that it came out at. And it's still like, sometimes I was, I was shooting with it just, you know, the week before I sold it. And sometimes I, I still, you know, get a, get a grin looking at the image um, that, that that camera produces. With the Scarlet W, which we had since I think early 2017, um, we jumped on that pretty early um, and bought it new, whereas the Scarlet X we bought um, used, barely used by the previous owner. Um, I think the biggest issue we had with it was at, we're just firmware related. There was a firmware that made it, I think every now and then it, it would shut down or something. I can't remember, it was something minor. We, we rolled it back to the previous firmware. The other one was there was a firmware upgrade where on the Sigma 18 to 35, when you went to wide open, if you accidentally scrolled to go one more stop open, it would lock and you couldn't close it down. Again, that was fixed in a firmware update and that was specific to that lens. That's the worst. Like that was the only issue we had with that camera in terms of how it's supposed to work and what it does. Like we had a pretty damn, pretty damn flawless experience from a usability perspective and everything with the RED cameras. Um, the other thing, you know, people talk about the RED menus being really kind of intricate and difficult to use. I think maybe they are if, if you only rent them every now and again, but if you own them, they're very simple. Like you get, like you get used to it in no time. So I don't, I don't see, although I do think the menu system in these is hands down better, hands down, maybe, maybe the best menu system I've ever used. Um, I think if you own a red, it's, it's a non-issue. You, you, you'll, you'll get used to that within a week. If you're just going through the manual, just playing through and just experimenting, you'll, you'll start to map out in your mind very quickly where you need to go. So I just wanted to make it really clear. I'm not like, oh, I've had enough of red, because I think they're, they make incredible cameras. Um, and if it wasn't for them, I don't think we'd be getting these. 
So yeah, um, and, I, and I absolutely, depending on what the future holds for the kind of work that myself and Elucinor is doing in the coming one, two, three, four, five years, um, we, we may end up back with RAID cameras again at some point. I don't know. But to be completely honest right now, I just see this system as a much better all-rounder. It's got the image quality to go up against a RED or an ARRI to get very, very, very close. In some ways, subjectively better, possibly. Um, there's one glaring issue with this, well, with both of them, which we can address with a third party, and we will, which just boggles my mind, um, which is why doesn't it have an optical low-pass filter built in? I haven't done my aliasing and more tests with it, but you can be sure I'll be picking up one of the third party optical low-pass filters, which I think are around four or $500. So my personal opinion is just add that to the price of the camera. So, Look, I'm going to do my tests with this, but I'm already going to, I'm already going to like order one like today. Um, that was something with red that I absolutely adored. I, I mean, although it is maybe a bit more extreme and makes the image on the softer side, it's optical low pass filter. You never had to worry about alias single more. It was just an, it was just a non-issue. So that's going to be a new thing for me having to maybe consider that, but, um, but yeah, I'll be picking one of those up. And I think if you're wanting to be in that area and not worrying about, I mean, an optical low pass filter is something that pretty much every other cinema camera, as far as I know, has. And it may just be about keeping the cost down on this thing. Um, but I really think that they should just get that done uh, internally because it makes a huge difference. Now on that point though, cost, $6,000 US, 4.6K, 120 frames per second, internal NDs, internal audio, you've got ProRes up to 4K, EF or PL mount, can, um, can run off, um, can run in select codecs and resolutions off uh, SSD, uh, SD cards, you got C fast cards. Um, you could go out USB uh, C to a um, Samsung T5, which is what I've been playing with, or you can get the SSD recorder, which I picked up. Uh, it's on order, and that that's what we're going to use as our main um, recording solution. Coming from Red Mags and Red Mini Mags, I'm like, oh my gosh, the money that this camera is saving me in storage media, being able to use um, solid state drives as my, my recording media, like their cost per gig compared to Red Mags, it's not, it's not even a, a comparison. Um, I don't know if there's gonna be a reliability difference, but I, I've been using the just the T5 plug into this and I've just been testing out what I can get out of our Extreme Pro um, SD cards that we use on the Fuji. Um, for the 4K on that. Um, and I can certainly shoot, I think at least 12 to one compressed raw 4.6K on this guy with those. So we, so we got to this point where, you know, we love the image we get from the red and there is a brand thing with it as well. And we're like, oh, you know, are we, are we paying for a brand name that whether it's agencies or other shooters or whatever, um, recognize um, that maybe, and Blackmagic, in my opinion, isn't at least yet recognized maybe in that same way, even though if you just put the images side by side, some people may prefer the images coming off this. And we, we found ourselves just weighing up like, oh, is this the right solution? You know, when you're dicking around like, changing ND filters, you know, pulling out your little pouch of Tiffin NDs and picking it and putting it on and doing it and just losing time, essentially. It was about increasing our productivity um, and finding a better solution kind of for us and our needs. Other than the productivity, it was like, well, our Scarlet W, you know, if we sell it again in another six months or another year, 
we're gonna get that much less for it with a lot of the other cameras coming out now. You know, we've just had the Sony FX9 announced. It looks like an incredible full frame um, camera, 6K autofocus. Um, uh, I think that's about 11 grand US. This is six grand US. The C500 Mark II, again, another beautiful looking um, full frame camera from Canon. It's gonna have killer autofocus. Uh, internal RAW, internal 10-bit, looks like a wonderful camera, 16 grand US, this is 6 grand US. So for us, the G2 just really got our attention, I think, when we were looking at tests and seeing the improved sensor read speed, how little rolling shutter there is, um, and I, I guess that improved read speed, the, uh, read speed um, the improved electronics has allowed them to get that 120 frames per second, you know, full sensor readout, um, uh, it, it, full sensor readout, full resolution in 120 frames per second. That's huge. That's something that those previously mentioned cameras don't do. And again, this is six grand US. When we were just looking at our other options, you know, there were two main features we were looking for. You know, we wanted, we wanted any, well, more than two, maybe three. We wanted to have an interchangeable mount system so we can still use PL glass. Um, as well as EF, which is what most of our in-house glass is, and when it's PL, we'll hire it, we hire it in. Um, we wanted internal NDs. That was probably the biggest one. Um, we wanted to have decent onboard audio. Um, but then this gave us so much more as well, like like um, improved um, improved battery life, faster boot time. And the, the big development was when Blackmagic brought out their Blackmagic RAW. Um, because I, I've been a huge proponent of red code for a long time and being able to vary that compression. And suddenly here you have a much cheaper solution with audio, with interchangeable mount, with a screen built in, with NDs, um, 4K ProRes built in, and now Blackmagic compressed RAW, three to one, five to one, eight to one, or 12 to one. And even, even testing just the 6K on my system, it is running so much faster in Premiere and Resolve than RED was. Again, at this point in time, as I understand, RED's new um, SDK they've developed with NVIDIA is not out and in the field so I'm sure there's a huge improvement about to come and that may put them at about even, but at this point in time, this is such a, it's such a smoother codec on the system, which as I understand, it does some of the work with the image, um, D something, whatever, D moosey-izing, D something. It's, it's processing some of that raw image, but not completely in the camera so your computer doesn't have to do all of it um, and that's effectively why it's so much faster um, in the editing system i guess compared to some of those those other new cameras coming out or existing cameras like the c300 mark ii the c200 we we wanted to i think and it's probably one of the reasons we stuck with red so long other than that beautiful image and incredible dynamic range is red code and we really saw, um, well, this camera is gonna is is got those benefits that we're um, that we that we are just really used to and not ready to let go of, which is that ability to adjust ISO and white balance in post in a compressed raw solution. I guess what this camera doesn't have that some of the competitors in terms of maybe the FS7, um, the C200 or the C300. Mark II is any kind of autofocus really. There's a push button autofocus, which you can pretty much ignore. I've got manual glass on both of these at the moment anyway. Um, but yeah, it's not something I use a lot. Like I have used it and, I, and, I, and that's the reason that I've at times hired a C200. It's because I'm flying it on a gimbal um, and I, I'm not doing it with a crew configuration where I've got someone pulling focus and I've been shooting on a Canon 50 uh, at 1.2, you know, holding the singer's face in focus, running around in a, in a field. 
and it's outstanding. So that's something this doesn't have. Um, saying that, I could see the C200 potentially being another camera, um, certainly worth us hiring to test to see how well we could bring those into line because I'd see, I could see that being, well, maybe that's a wonderful autofocus camera with decent dynamic range and beautiful color that could match in quite well with this. We do have the Fuji X-T3, which does do, you can see that's got the Ronin S mount on there at the moment, and that does do um, out to an external recorder, 10-bit, 4K, 422. I really love the color science in this. I love this camera, and for the price, it's outstanding, but it doesn't have the dynamic range to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, the Ursa or with the, um, or with the Reds and um, it doesn't have the flexibility of RAW. And I think particularly when you're mixing different camera systems, you know, I found even with the Reds, I would rate the MX considerably, um, you know, four to 500 Kelvin cooler than the Scarlet W. The Scarlet W I'd need to give um, a bit, you know, of a magenta tint just to offset its uh, movement to, to green and the MX was the opposite, the tiniest bit of a green tint to offset its slight magenta. That's just in the raw settings. I could bring them into line quite quickly, but raw um, and having a compressed usable raw, really useful for bringing in, uh, for bringing into line multiple camera systems. Um, and the times that I used the C200, I was mixing it in with the Red Scarlet W. Having, having a raw really enabled me to do that. So yeah, we, we don't have all, like decent autofocus at all on this. Um, the Fuji is the only camera of ours that has that. Most of the time it's a feature we're not using um, at the moment. Um, but yeah, for the, other than that, this ticks all the boxes. And when I go, well, this is six grand US, the Canon C500 Mark II is 16 grand US. Would I love that camera? Um, sh yes, would I love it more than this? Maybe not. It's not going to give me 120 full frame, um, 120 frames per second at full frame. So again, there's still certain things this can do that those much more expensive cameras cannot do. And just from the look of things, they're all in the same, they're all playing in the same league in terms of image quality and in terms of color science, all with their differences, but all producing really beautiful images. Um, so yeah, it's just, there's no perfect camera. This just ticked the most boxes for us. And because of the price, what we're doing is using the money that we, um, the profit essentially from selling the Scarlet W uh, as a kit, that enables us to invest in, well, we can either keep that money and go on holiday or buy lots of coffee, whatever we want to do. Um, but we're using that money to invest in other equipment that it was an, is going to enable us to do things better or be more productive or more efficient. That's, that's the same thing, but, um, or pick up some other pieces of kit. Um, I'm not going to say what those are. Um, when we get them, we'll talk about them and, and maybe review them. Um, but it just meant that from switching from the reds, switching to black magic, you know, if you look at the, the, the black magic 6k, um, as a replacement for our Scarlett MX as a B cam. Um, you've got around the same dynamic range, I think, between those two cameras. This is giving me 6K compressed RAW up to 50 frames per second. The Scarlett MX um, 4K up to 30 frames per second. Um, you know, there's other reasons why the, 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 the Scarlett MX is certainly a much tougher production ready environment camera, much stronger build quality. Um, it's a much older camera. I think it was announced in late November, 2011. Um, so this is just really showing that, <clears throat> I think that democratization of technology and that technology just getting cheaper. Again, the Scarlett, the red cameras, they're probably on another level in terms of build quality and you can just feel that in the weight. Um, but yeah, you're just seeing, well, we're getting much more, we're getting much more out of this. We don't have the same fan noise to contend with, and it's gonna be a much better color match for the, for the Ursa. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I'd, I'd even consider like picking up a Blackmagic Pocket 
you know, 4K as a, as a, as a C cam maybe, or another, or another one of those. Um, I'm not sure, but I can already tell you, I am so excited about, about built-in NDs. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just so, I'm so excited about that. But yeah, ha, how do I, how do I feel? about the change because I think if you look at it from a, a brand name perspective um, red for better or worse whether you agree or disagree I think at least where I live has a much stronger brand name that that is affiliated with really high quality and I think at least from my perspective when black magic came out with cameras um, there was a, a lot of um, there was a lot of teething problems with quality control and cameras going back um, long delivery times. I remember before we got the Scarlett MX, we actually had the original Black Magic, Black Magic Cinema Camera, the 2.5K one, on order, and then I and then I found a, a good deal on a on a used Scarlett MX. We left that order and we and we jumped on the on the Scarlett. We we don't didn't regret it. I do not regret having Reds. I think they're outstanding cameras. I'll definitely use them in the future. I may even buy one or two again in the future. But for right now, this is a much better uh, all-round solution for us that fits our needs and is going to make us more efficient on set and make our workflow even faster in post. So yeah, look, we'll have some content coming out over the coming weeks and months around using these cameras together, around the changes we're experiencing, moving from RED um, to the Blackmagic um, Black RAW system. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to do this video because I thought, you know, I, I, there may be other people in a similar position. I'd be really, like, I really appreciate um, the genuine discussion that's gone on in, uh, in the comments in, in in a couple of the videos that that i've uploaded both the the, the critical comments um or just the general discussion like it's all it's all really good and i really um i really appreciate it and i really get a lot out of your feedback like i generally do it's i genuinely do it's one of the um i think it's one of the motivations for me to produce more content so i apologize for the three week hiatus after starting to kick things off. It's been a, um, it's been a tricky time between um, work and Shane being away in the UK. Uh, he's back in another week though. Um, and we'll have a lot more content coming and I'll try and be uh, a lot more consistent. So um, look, questions for you. Um, what do you think on the face of things of our decision and our reasoning and our choice? Um, any, do any of you have any experience using the C200 along with the Ursa or the, the G2 or the, or the previous model or the Blackmagic cameras? Just a question in terms of color science, because if we we're getting another camera that was not Blackmagic, um, I could see, um, potentially the Canon C200 being a cool option as a, like an autofocus all-in-one gimbal camera with really beautiful color and really decent dynamic range. I still keep the Fuji and it's great for a lot of things, but if I'm in an outdoor high contrast situation and I'm mixing in with this guy, which has about rated at 15 stops, I need something with a bit more. Um, yeah. Hope you got something out of that rant. I don't, I don't feel super confident about this video. I never kind of do. I feel like I've just kind of meandered my way through, but hopefully um, there's some, some good info there. And again, I just want to reiterate that I, I am not um, super pro black magic or anti red or anything like that. I think reds are doing, still doing incredible work. It's just for us, this just makes sense from a um, features perspective, from an image quality perspective, and from a business perspective. And that's probably what it boils down to mostly. It was a, it was a business decision. And yeah, because there is part of me that's like, <gasps> let go of my red cameras that I love. But from a business perspective, this makes so much more sense for us. Thanks for watching. 
Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe because that's what you meant to say, right? That probably really distorted. <laughs>